Well, can I have a close walk with the Lord? Amen. And uh, I'm glad the Lord allows us to uh, walk with him. And, and by the way, it's a daily walk. Amen. Uh, that's why it's important to be in the word of God. And, and I, can't, uh, I cannot uh, emphasize enough how important it is to be in the Word of God as a Christian, and uh, it's so important, amen. By the way, somebody else asked, uh, uh, if they, they said, uh, if I have to work today, uh, can I come late? Uh, you know, if I come later, will, will that be possible? I said, yeah. Uh, so if you want to come uh, tonight, come a little bit later, that, that is just fine. If you uh, work and then you say, well, I can only come for an hour, you come for an hour. If you can uh, come for two hours, you come for two hours, amen? However it works out, and uh, I know some of you have to work this afternoon and this evening, and, and, uh, but you're welcome to come anytime that you're able to, amen? Turn your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Nehemiah. This is the last uh, Sunday of this year. The theme for our church this year has been uh, rebuild, taken from uh, Ezra chapter number four, verse number three. And uh, we're not going to be looking at that particular passage, but in the book of Nehemiah, the children of Israel, they're, they're rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, and certainly this is something that can apply to us and uh, uh, how we need to rebuild and, and all that. And, and uh, so we're going to be looking at some things here uh, this morning uh, that hopefully will be a help and encouragement to each of you, uh, cer- certainly a challenge. Uh, that's my, my prayer and my desire. But uh, Nehemiah chapter number three, and uh, we're not going to look at the entire chapter today. Matter of fact, uh, next week, I'll actually kind of finish up this particular uh, chapter dealing with uh, this uh, particular passage and uh, uh, kind of start off the new year. You'll see why, uh, if you haven't figured out already the theme for next year, uh, but uh, uh, that, uh, that'll be why uh, we'll be looking at that uh, particular passage next week. So, uh, But anyways, uh, uh, we're going to look at this one here today. DMI chapter number three. Let's stand to show respect to the reading of God's word. If you cannot, I understand you may remain seated, but if we could, stand and show respect. As we read uh, Nehemiah chapter number three, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to pick up there in verse number one. We'll read the, through verse number 14. We'll have a word of prayer and then we'll get right into the message uh, here uh, today. Uh, Nehemiah chapter number three, beginning there in verse number one, it says then uh, this, then uh, Eliashib, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priests, and they builded the sheep gate. Uh, they sanctified it and set up uh, the doors of it, even unto uh, the tower of Meha. Uh, they sanctified it unto the tower of uh, Hananiel. And next unto him builded the men of Jericho, and next to them builded uh, Zechar, the son of Imri. But the fish gate did the sons of uh, Hassana uh, uh, build. By the way, I'm so glad I didn't name any of my children these names. Amen. Who did also laid the, uh, who also, I'm sorry, laid the beams thereof and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired uh, Miramoth, the son of uh, Urijah, uh, the son of uh, Kaz. The, and next unto them repaired uh, Meshulam, the son of uh, Berechiah, the son of uh, Mesha, uh, Z- Zebil, uh, Z- Zabil, I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, unto, next unto them repaired Zadok, the, uh, the son of uh, Banna. And next unto them, the Tekoites uh, repaired, but their nobles put not their necks to the work of their Lord. Moreover, the old gate repaired uh, Jehoiada, the son of uh, uh, Pesia, and uh, Meshulam, the son of uh, Besodia, and uh, laid the beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, and the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired uh, Melatiah, uh, the Gibeonite, and Jadon, the Maranathite, and men of Gibeon and of Mizpah, unto the throne of the governor on this side of uh, the river. Next unto him repaired Uziel, uh, the son of uh, Hera, Herahiah, and uh, of the goldsmiths. Next unto him also repaired Hananiah, the son of one of the uh, Apocrathes, and they, uh, they fortified Jerusalem unto the broad wall. And next unto them repaired uh, Rephiah, uh, the son of Hur, the, uh, the ruler of half of uh, the half part of Jerusalem. And next unto them repaired uh, Jediah, the son of uh, Haramuth, uh, and uh, uh, even over against his house. And next unto him repaired Hattush, the son of uh, Hashabira, uh, the Mal- uh, Malachi. Uh, I'm sorry, 
Melchijah, uh, the son of Haram, and Meshub, the son of uh, Pehath uh, Moab, repaired the other piece and the tower of, uh, of the furnaces. And next unto him repaired Shalom, the uh, son of Helohesh, uh, uh, Helohesh, I'm sorry, the uh, ruler of the uh, half of the a part of Jerusalem, he and his daughters. The valley gate repaired Hanan, and the inhabitants of Zenoah, they built it and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof, and a thousand cubits on the wall unto the dung gate. Dung gate repaired uh, Malchiah, the son of Rechab, uh, uh, Rechab I'm sorry, uh, and the ruler of the part of Beth Hakarim. Uh, he built it and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. I'm glad I'm done with those names. I'll be honest about that. But I entitled the message this morning The Work Rebuilding Begins. The Work Rebuilding Begins. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you and praise you for all that you do for us, Lord. Thank you for each one that's able to be here. Lord, I know there's uh, some folks that aren't able to be here this morning, Lord, uh, because of sickness. Lord, there are some uh, that are out of town yet. And Lord, others, they're just, uh, they got some spiritual sickness going on. And Lord, uh, uh, we, we know that and desire that you would do a work in their hearts and lives. And, and Lord, that uh, we would see them uh, come back to your house and, and uh, as soon as they're able to. Well, Lord, we ask that you would meet with us. Lord, we, uh, we need you to do a work in our midst. Lord, I, I can't do anything of my own power or of my own will. Lord, I need uh, uh, the power of your Holy Spirit to guide and direct uh, what I say, what I do, Lord. And, and Lord, your people need uh, uh, the Holy Spirit to help them to hear and understand, uh, Lord, the things that I said here today. Lord, I pray that each of us would be uh, led by the Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, just guide and direct our thoughts, our words. Lord, I pray that Christ would be even lifted up during the service here today. Lord, you said, and I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. And Lord, that's our desire. That's our prayer uh, here uh, this morning. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to do that. Bless now your word. Lord, I pray that if there is somebody here that does not know you as their personal Lord and Savior, Lord, that today would be the day of salvation for them. Lord, that uh, uh, we would see uh, them come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, bless now our time together. Lord, we'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for what you're about to do. In Jesus' precious name we pray and for his sake. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. The work rebuilding begins. You know, uh, I want you to uh, keep your finger there in Nehemiah. Turn real quick like to 1 Corinthians chapter number uh, 3. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. We're going to be looking at Nehemiah, but I also want you to notice uh, something here in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. And beginning there in verse number 11, it says this, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon uh, this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. You know, uh, uh, here in, uh, back in, Nehemiah uh, chapter number three kind of parallels here. Uh, it reminds us of this as far as uh, you know having the right foundation and and rebuilding and and as a as a Christian we ought to be rebuilding. Here uh, is a a chapter you know this entire chapter uh, here Nehemiah chapter number three. If you were to read it, uh, it's about rebuilding. It's rebuilding uh, the uh, walls and and uh, it's a. a, a a remarkable uh, record, really, of uh, rebuilding even the gates and each thing that's uh, uh, set up. And, and uh, you know, they begin at the Sheep Gate there in Jerusalem. And these verses here take us on a tour clockwise from the west to the north to the east and then back again to the south uh, to the Sheep Gate. And, uh, you know, it, it's amazing that of these gates, you know, there's, there's ten gates total. And uh, we'll be looking at just five of those gates here today. But uh, each of those gates has something to do with our life as far as rebuilding. You know, there's a work for all of us to do. You know, uh, all who cared to do anything were able to find work to do. 
There, of course, were some that refused to work. If you look at verse number five, it said, uh, the latter part of verse number five, it said, but the nobles put not their uh, necks to the work of their Lord. You know, there were some people that just said, hey, I'm not going to work. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this. this. This is not for me. You know, and there's going to be people like that. They're just, uh, you know, uh, uh, we we all should say, "Hey, I want to, I, I want to do, uh, hey, I want, I want to rebuild my life. I want to rebuild our church. I want to see God work in my life and and in my heart." But there's going to be some people. They're just going to say, "You know what? I don't want God to do my uh, do work in my life. I don't want God to rebuild my life. I like my life uh, the way it is, and and I don't want to be. You know, I don't want anybody messing it up, and I don't want anybody changing it. You know, I'm I'm uh, satisfied with the status quo." And they're going to be some people like that. But each of us need to be willing to say, you know what, I, I don't want to be like that, and I, I don't want to, I, you know, I, I don't want to have a heart problem. You know, that's, by the way, it did reveal uh, that they truly had a heart problem. That's what it was. And, and it reveals if somebody has that attitude and says, hey, I don't want to rebuild. I don't want to uh, see our church rebuilt. I don't want to see my life rebuilt. Uh, then it shows their heart. It, it really does. It reveals what's in their heart. But the rest of the people here in our text, and Nehemiah chapter number three, they were united in their effort of rebuilding the walls and rebuilding the gates, repairing them. And if you uh, uh, notice, there's kind of a a phrase that's uh, mentioned, uh, uh, it's mentioned in verse number two, and next unto him. That phrase is repeated over and over in this entire chapter, and next unto him, and next unto him, and next unto him. You know, if, uh, if you're not able to swing a hammer, you can certainly pray for those that are swinging the hammer. Amen? You know, uh, uh, you can certainly pray. You know, we uh, uh, have a prayer time uh, on Sunday mornings here. I would encourage you. We have, we have some uh, folks that uh, come uh, about 9.30, and uh, it's only about 9.30 to about 9.45, 9.40, 9.45. We don't go, go any longer than that. Uh, the goal is to pray for the services. The goal is to pray for the Sunday school classes. The goal is to pray for, uh, you know, folks to be uh, uh, responsive to the messages and, and for the Holy Spirit to work in those that are unsaved. Pray, and pray that they will see them get saved. Amen. That should be our prayer and that should be our heart's desire. You can pray for other things, you know, uh, uh, you know at other times, but uh, that, the purpose of that Sunday morning prayer time is to pray for this service, amen, to pray for the services tonight, the, the Sunday school classes, junior church, primary church, uh, even nursery, you know, uh, uh, certainly we can pray for the nursery workers, and, you know, it's a lot of work, uh, you know, uh, they have to uh, keep the kids entertained, amen, and if I preach long, well, I get, I get an earful of the, about it, amen, but, uh, um, you know, like pastor, you know, we, we played this game 15 times, you know, we can only play it so many times, but... But the reality of it is this, you know, uh, we have to be willing to say, Lord, would you do a, a work of rebuilding in my heart and my life? If you were to look at uh, the uh, one word that's uh, in this particular passage, you know, the word repaired is mentioned 35 times just in this passage, just, just in uh, Nehemiah chapter number three, the word repaired is mentioned 35 times pretty significant. Amen. Pretty amazing. And the work was successful because each person, each individual uh, was willing to be involved, being willing to say, hey, I'm going to do something to repair, something to rebuild. There are some things that we can learn from the rebuilding of the walls here, the repairing of the gates for God. And as uh, the work rebuilding begins here, let us look together at these gates, what, they, what we can learn from them and how they apply, uh, and maybe even some of the names of some of the people, how they apply to each of us here today. As I said, I've got just five things here this morning that hopefully will be a help and encouragement to each of you. First of all, number one, we see the sheep gate. We see the sheep gate. Notice in verse number one, he says there, and then Eliashib, uh, the high priest, rose up for, uh, with his brethren, the priests, and they builded the sheep gate. They sanctified it and set up the doors of it, even un, uh, unto the tower of Miha. They sanctified it uh, unto the tower of, of Hananiel. Then uh, skip down to verse number 32. I know we didn't uh, look at this verse uh, at the beginning, but notice what it says there, verse number 32. And between the going up of the corner unto the sheep gate, repaired the goldsmiths and the merchants. You know, here's the first mention and work uh, uh, that has started. You know, they, uh, they started at the sheep gate. 
Through this gate, the sacrificial animals many times were led to the altar. This gate would have given constant witness to the fact that Christ is the first and last work of salvation for us. Amen? For the sake of time, we're not going to go there, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, we know that uh, uh, he's the, uh, if you were to look at Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 2, it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and what? Finisher. He's the beginning and the end of our faith. Amen? He, uh, he's the beginning and the, uh, the, uh, the end. He's the alpha and the omega, the Bible tells us. And, and I'm so glad to know that, that he, uh, salvation begins with him. This gate is a type of Christ who uh, was led as a lamb to the slaughter. It pictures the blessed work of the Lamb of God. Even John said, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Amen? He is that lamb, and this is a perfect picture of of how we need to begin our life. And by the way, you can't rebuild your life until you have salvation. Amen? You can't rebuild spiritually on something you don't have. If you don't have that foundation. But you know, Eliashib was the one that led the effort to repair the sheep gate. There's an interesting fact about his name. His name means whom God restores. Whom God restores. You know, God restores our relationship with him at the moment of salvation. Amen? Aren't you glad for that? Boy, <clears throat> uh, there was a, a separation when, when Adam sinned. There was that separation from God. No longer could God be around sin. And, and so because of that, uh, there was that separation. And, and God desires that each person come to him uh, through salvation through Jesus Christ. And it's, uh, it's sad that there's some people, uh, uh, they don't want to be restored. Amen? But then think about this. Once you've come to him uh, and, uh, as, a, as a Christian, uh, once you've uh, gotten saved, but you can come to God uh, as a Christian in contrition asking for forgiveness. And he restores the joy of our salvation. Amen? You know, there's a lot of people, I'm glad, by the way, aren't you glad? Uh, turn, turn your Bible uh, with me real quick, like to Psalm 51, and then I'll, I'll tell you this. I'm glad we cannot lose our salvation, amen? I am so glad that our, our, our salvation is for all eternity. It's settled. It's something we don't have to worry about. We don't have to wonder, well, you know, if I do this, you know, it's not based upon what we do. It's based upon what Christ did for us, amen? And then it's secured by God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All three of the Trinity uh, are, uh, have our salvation secured. I'm glad for that, amen? But I will say this. There's a lot of Christians that can lose this and have lost the joy of their salvation. I, I'm glad you can't lose your salvation, but sadly, there are people that lose the joy of their salvation. They, 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 it no longer thrills them when, you know, the Bible's preached. You know, uh, my wife and I were talking about this. There are sometimes people that they don't want to be around, uh, you know, the pastor because they are just under conviction just by, by your pastor being around them. Amen. It just, it, it is what it is. I can't control that. I can't change that. And you and I have to be willing to say, Lord, uh, would you restore to me the joy of thy salvation? I, uh, Lord, I, I know I can't lose my salvation, but Lord, I know I can lose the joy of it. Even uh, uh, David here in Psalm chapter number 51, and uh, picking up in verse number 6, he, uh, he cries out to the Lord, and, and in verse number 6, he says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. By the way, that's where it begins, amen? You want to get the joy of your salvation back? It begins right here in your own heart. Not in somebody else's heart, not in somebody else's life, but right here in your own heart, amen? You have to be willing to say, Lord, I am so sorry. I, I offended you. Lord, I know your, by, your word says no, and I did it anyways. Lord, would you forgive me, amen? That's where it begins, being honest with yourself. Then he goes on to say in verse number seven, he says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. You know, it's amazing. I, I wrote about, uh, uh, you know, the whiter than snow in the uh, bulletin and, and it is amazing. I know right now we didn't get much of a, a snowfall. You know, to me, it's like, this is the kind of snow I hate because it messes everything up just enough. And it's like, look, give us, give us six inches, give us a foot, all right? Uh, I'm fine with that. If, if you, wanna, you want snow, all right, I'll pray for a foot of snow just to make you all happy, amen? And you'll be like, no, pastor, don't pray for that, amen? 
But yeah, next Sunday. <laughs> but the reality of it is, is this, is when snow comes, when it is that six inch snow or that foot snow, it is amazing how just beautiful it is. And everything is just white. Amen. You know, uh, the grass right now out here is, is uh, brown. Amen. There was somebody recently like, boy, I'm getting uh, green grass. I'm like, yeah, it must be nice. Amen. <laughs> but up here we get the, uh, you know, if we don't get much rain, then uh, uh, it turns brown and that's what we have. But that white blanket of snow covers everything. Amen. And that's exactly what he's talking about. The Lord does that in our heart and our life makes everything clean, makes everything uh, uh, white again. But notice in verse number eight, he says, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. You know, sometimes we, uh, we get out of, uh, out of joint, don't we? We get out of sorts and God has to say, okay, hey, I've, I've allowed this to happen, this foot to be broken, your leg to be broken, your arm, spiritually speaking, all right? We're not talking about in reality. I'm talking about spiritually speaking. Sometimes God allows that to happen to get us to the point where we say, okay, Lord, I'm going to rely upon you. I'm not going to try to you know, do my own thing and do it my own way. Lord, I'm going to rely upon you. And that's exactly what he wants us to do is rely upon him. Then he goes on to say, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Then notice in verse number 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. You know, the problem with a lot, of, a lot of Christians is they have a wrong spirit, amen? A wrong attitude, a bad attitude, a, uh, a foul, uh, you know, even a, uh, I've seen where people, they have bitterness in their heart and it shows and it, I mean, it just comes out of their pores, it comes out of their, their very being, their very fiber, amen? And it's sad, it's like, boy, there's more to life than uh, being bitter about something, amen? But notice what else he says, he says, cast, not away, uh, cast, cast, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy uh, Holy Spirit from me. And then notice in verse number 12, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. You know, the problem with a lot of Christians, they just need the restoration of their salvation, amen, as far as the joy of their salvation. Not their salvation itself, but the joy of their salvation, all that we have and are begin at that sheep gate, though. You see, the person and work of Christ is a starting point of, of true restoration. That's where it's going to begin. It's always going to begin with Christ. And this must be guarded above all. You know, uh, uh, we need to be willing to say, Lord, I want to I wanna guard that gate. At the close of this chapter, there, uh, this is the only gate mentioned again. You know, uh, there's all the other gates there in Nehemiah chapter number three. They're mentioned one time, but, but here in Nehemiah chapter number three, it's mentioned there in verse number one, and then you go all the way to the end of the uh, chapter there, and it's mentioned again. There's no other gate that's mentioned twice in this chapter. It is a great truth, though, and that is this, the gospel, that all the repairing of the inroads of the flesh and the world must start and end with Christ. Amen. This is the gate, by the way, that leads to life and into his very presence. Oh, we see there, number one, the sheep gate. Number one, we see the sheep gate. Number two, we see the fish gate. We see the fish gate. Look back in our text there, verse number three and following. Nehemiah chapter number three and verse number three. And the fish gate, uh, I'm sorry, but the fish gate that the sons of uh, Hannes, uh, Hassaniah uh, uh, build, uh, he, who also laid the beams thereof and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired uh, Merimoth, the son of Urijah, uh, the son of uh, Kaz. And next unto them repaired Meshulam, uh, the son of Berechiah, the son of uh, Mesha, uh, Z- uh, Me- uh, I'm sorry, Mesha Z- uh, Zabil, and next unto them repaired Zadok, the, uh, the son of Banna. And next unto them, uh, the uh, Tekonites repaired, uh, but their nobles put not their necks to the work uh, of, their, of their Lord. Moreover, the old gate, I'm sorry, let me pause right there. The fish gate. You know, uh, there, there well uh, could have been a fish market. Uh, the Bible doesn't tell us, uh, but uh, certainly there could have been a fish market near this gate. Uh, although we don't, don't really know, but uh, it's very possible. Even Maybe even the, the fishermen would come in and out of that uh, uh, gate. But, 
But this gate reminds us of the words of Christ found in Mark chapter number one and verse 17 when he said, follow me and I will make you to be fishers of men. You know, after we pass through the sheep gate, then we must go through the fish gate. And then once we get saved, we need to be willing to say, hey, I'm going to be a fisher of men. I'm going to be one that uh, in order to repair uh, Birch Street Baptist Church and repair my life and, and repair and rebuild and all, all that, you know, I know I need to be a fisher of men. I've been challenging everybody this year to get gospel tracts. You know who give out gospel tracts? Amen. Somebody's been listening. Amen. Those who have them. If you don't have them, by the way, I'm not trying to embarrass you this morning. I want to encourage you to get some today. We have a track rack that's full of them. You say, well, well, uh, if I take all of them, will there be more? Yep, we've got more. Amen. We've got a box and case and all those different ones. We'll, we'll put more out there. But you have to be willing to share the gospel. You know, uh, first comes salvation, but then we ought to be a fisher of men. In, the way, uh, in this way, the work of God is rebuilt. The church is rebuilt. Uh, Christ is lifted up. It's interesting that the name of uh, Hassaniah, uh, one of the builders of that gate, means lifted up. Isn't that interesting? You and I need to realize, hey, we need to lift up Christ before others. We need to make sure that others know that Christ is for, uh, foremost in our hearts and thoughts and, and our lives. Amen? The problem with a lot of Christians, Christ is an afterthought. Amen? He, uh, 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 they treat God like a condiment. Well, I, I may, might as well spread a little bit of God on this so it looks, uh, looks appealing to everybody else. Amen? But you and I need to realize, hey, the fish gate is important in our life. As far as the work re- rebuilding beginning there, we saw the fish gate, number one, the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, number one, the sheep gate, the, and number two, the fish gate. Number three, we see the old gate. We see the old gate. I started reading that, I apologize, verse number six. It says, moreover, the old gate repaired uh, Jehoiada, the son of uh, Pasea, and uh, Meshulam, the son of uh, Bezodiah, uh, and uh, they laid the beams thereof and set up the doors thereof and the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. You know, this gate was called uh, the corner gate uh, elsewhere. Kind of reminds me of Christ. Christ is our cornerstone, amen? Years ago when we were building uh, this particular building, uh, we had to start with a corner. (coughs) And if I remember correctly, I believe over in this corner was where we started off building. We uh, started the in this corner over here, uh, laying the bricks and the blocks, and then we went out from there, and, and we're trying to uh, stay at level. Uh, that's why, uh, uh, if you notice, this building is a couple of inches taller. I think it's about three inches taller uh, than the other building, and that's why there's a ramp going into the other part of the building. It's because when we started off, we were already still already too high uh, compared to the rest of it. We later found out it was our transit. Our transit was off, and because of that, made everything else off, and it is what it is, amen? You have one, one part off, everything else will make it off. But, but anyways, uh, nonetheless, this was the cornerstone. We started with that over here. As a Christian, there has to be a cornerstone where you start, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. There is the old path, the old ways. The old gate uh, reminds us of of God. His goings forth have been from old, from everlasting to everlasting, who is the cornerstone upon uh, upon whom all rests. You know, we just celebrated Christ, amen, uh, on on Christmas this last week here. You know, uh, it's amazing that uh, so many times we get past Christmas and then we don't even think about him again. He never comes to the forefront of our mind throughout the rest of the year. Till we come around Christmas again, and we're like, oh, we got to keep Christ in Christmas. Well, what about the rest of the year? What about keeping Christ in our life, period? Amen? You and I need to be willing to say, Lord, that needs to be uh, important in my life. One of the men listed in verse number seven, his name is Melatiah. His name means Jehovah delivers. You and I need to realize, hey, God desires to deliver our lives, but we must follow his path in order for him to be able to deliver us. Amen? Uzziel mentioned in verse number eight, 
His name is my strength is God. By the way, God will always give you the strength that you need to follow the right path. Amen. Re, uh, Rephaiah, uh, mentioned in verse number uh, nine, means this, healed of Jehovah. Isn't that amazing how God orchestrated the right people at the right gate to, uh, to repair, and they had a name that represented some things that you and I need? Think of this. When you follow the paths of the Lord, the old gates, the Lord always heals our souls. Amen? You know what, something that really heals my heart? Just seeing the old hymns. Amen? Singing Amazing Grace never gets old. Uh, it, it never gets so old to me. Uh, my favorite hymn is, uh, I just had it on my brain. <laughs> It is well, thank you. It is well with my soul. My wife knows me, amen. I had, had something else in my brain all of a sudden. But it is well with my soul. You know what's amazing? Those verses, if you look at those verses, it just it's a healing uh, process, amen. And you and I need to be willing to say, Lord, would you help me to, to be able to uh, uh, be healed and, and oh, we need to follow the old paths. And also, uh, uh, Jediah uh, in verse number 10 means praise Jehovah. You know, we can give praise to the Lord when we follow the Lord and he leads us in the paths of righteousness. You see, the old, old gate is the right gate. It's the right path. And you and I need to follow it. Oh, we see there the old gate. Number one, we see the sheep gate. Number two, the fish gate. Number three, the, uh, the old gate. Number four, we see the valley gate. We see the valley gate. Look at verse number 13, if you will. It says there, the valley gate repaired Hanan and the inhabitants of uh, Zenoa. They built it and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof, and a thousand cubits on the wall unto the dung gate. You know, this, uh, this was repaired by Hanan. His name means gracious. Isn't that amazing how the Lord is gracious to us in our time of need? But then also, uh, uh, it was also repaired by the inhabitants of Zenoa. Zenoah means broken. Isn't that amazing? Many times we, uh, uh, this gate, uh, this, uh, 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 the, uh, the old gate, I'm sorry, the valley gate, the valley gate pictures when we're broken. Amen? You ever had a time in your life when you felt you were down, discouraged, down in a valley? Amen? I've been there. It's hard. It's not easy, amen? Sometimes people go through hard valleys, uh, uh, harder valleys than others. I, I, I can't explain that. I, I can't, uh, uh, you know, explain why, you know, some people seem to go through valleys while others uh, seem they never have, have a valley. And valleys do not always bring happiness. But I will say this, it is in the valleys of life where growing takes place. Brother, uh, Brother Salem mentioned it this morning. You know, sometimes God has to take us through some trials and some testings for us to mature as a Christian. Amen? There's been some valleys that I've had to go through. There's been some valleys that you've had to go through. They're not always uh, fun. You know, you're not like, uh, oh, goody, we're going to have another valley today. Amen? I'm, not, I'm, not, uh, I'm allergic to valleys. Amen? But... I will say this, I've, I've been throughout uh, this country and there's some, there's some beautiful vistas. Uh, you know, I've been up on uh, Pikes Peak in, in uh, Colorado. I've been to, uh, you know, uh, the Rocky Mountains and, and it's amazing just uh, getting up there and looking and, and the thing about uh, up on the peaks of the mountains is there really is nothing growing. There's no green grass, there's nothing, there's no trees. Pikes Peak, I remember uh, my brother and I in the middle of July one year or June or something like that. It was, in, it was in the summertime. We went up there and there was still snow on the ground. We were able to have a snowball fight and, and I made a snowball, brought it back home and kept it in the freezer. It was in the freezer for a couple of years and I threw it my... No, I didn't, I didn't do that. I thought it, amen, but then I realized how hard that thing had become. I was like, man, I'm not hitting anybody with that, amen. Somebody threw it. No, just kidding. I, nobody threw it at me. But the reality of it is this, up on those mountaintops, there's nothing. 
Oh, it's a beautiful vista. It really is. I, I don't think I've ever seen uh, some uh, more beautiful, you know, uh, pictures or picturesque uh, valleys or just uh, how beautiful, how far you can see even. You know, that's just amazing. But there's nothing growing there. As you go down the mountaintops, you start getting into the lower valleys and the, and the lower hills, the foothills they call them. That's where you begin to see the trees. That's where you begin to see the green shrubbery. That's where you begin to see the green grass. Amen? But you see, that's where many times God has to bring us in those low places for us to grow. You look at the life of Job. Job was on the mountaintop, amen? He was experiencing blessings and, and uh, had all kinds of things, good things happening to him. And all of a sudden, in one, uh, one chapter we read, he loses his, his uh, source of income. He loses a lot of his, his uh, uh, servants. He loses his children. The very next chapter, he loses his own health, amen? And yet he was faithful to the Lord, and you and I have to be willing to say, Lord, help me to, to uh, stay faithful to you in, uh, in the valleys. You know, uh, va- the valleys many times mark, uh, it's a mark of Christ. It's, it shows humility. The opposite of that is pride, and uh, pride is a mark of Satan. Pride says, I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to do what, uh, what God wants me to do. Amen? And many times we just need to be willing to say, Lord, I'm going to come to you. And Lord, I, I'm, I'm broken. I, I don't have any other way out of this. But Lord, I'm going to follow you. Oh, we see there the valley gate. Number one, we see as far as the work rebuilding begins. Number one, we see the sheep gate. Number two, we see the fish gate. Number three, we see the old gate. Number four, we see the valley gate. And lastly, number five, we see the dung gate. We see the dung gate. Notice in verse number 14, if you will. It says there, but the dung gate repaired uh, Malchiah, the son of uh, Rechab, uh, the ruler of the part of Beth Hakarim. Uh, he built it and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. You know, this gate was probably not a gate that was popular. Amen? But it was needed. It was needed. This gate was used to carry refuse and filth out of the city. It's the dung gate. This gate reminds us of the exhortation to us today to, el- uh, uh, to eliminate uh, uh, the filth and refuse in our life, to cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. Being willing to say, Lord, there's some things I need to take out of that dung gate. I need to make sure I clean my life up. And Lord, Lord, these things that I've allowed to, to uh, uh, cause uh, harm in my life, Lord, I'm going to carry them out. I'm going to get rid of them. By the way, if we have truly learned the lesson of the valley gate, we'll have no difficulty with the dung gate. Amen? We won't sit there and say, well, I'm not going to carry this out of that dung gate. You know, everybody, it stinks over there. Well, yeah, so does your life. Amen? And we need to be willing to just say, Lord, I'm going to clean some things up. You see, the work we're building begins right here with you and I. When we look at Nehemiah, it should cause us to look at our lives as a Christian in a way that we see our spiritual lives typified by the walls and gates that were broken down and are now being rebuilt. You see, the life of a Christian is not a life of ease, but it can be one of victory. The life of a Christian is one of service and can bring about much joy while serving him. But we must do it the Lord's way. Will you join me in rebuilding the walls and restoring the gates in each of our lives today? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. The work rebuilding begins. The work rebuilding begins right here, right now, with you. If you're here today, you'd say, Pastor, I don't know if I'm saved. I'm not 100% sure if heaven's my eternal home. But I'd like to be sure. Pastor, in this brief prayer, would you pray for me? Would you indicate that need just by slipping your hand up and slipping back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Pastor, pray for me. I don't know if I'm saved. Would you pray for me? The other question then is this. You say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. And I realize I've I've got to rebuild uh, some 
some walls and some gates, some things need to be repaired in my life. And God showed me through these uh, five gates that we looked at today, there's some things in my heart and in my life that need to be, be repaired, need to be built, rebuilt, some gates fixed, some areas of my life improved. You say, Pastor, that's me. Would you pray for me? Would you indicate that need just by slipping your hand up and slipping back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Boy, there are hands all over this auditorium here today. Thank you. We slip them down. Anybody else? Thank you. I see those hands as well. Anybody else? Pastor, I didn't raise my hand a moment ago, but God did speak to my heart. Would you pray for me? Is anybody else like that? Yes, I see that one. Anybody else? I see that one. I see that one as well. Thank you. We slip them down. Pastor, pray for me. God's working in my heart. Would you pray for me? Anybody else like that this morning? In just a moment, we're going to have a hymn of invitation. I want to invite you to come and talk with the Lord. Come and do business with him. Won't you come? Won't you come? Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts. Bless now this invitation time. Lord, I pray be glorified through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone stand to their feet, every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around as the music begins to play.